let's look at DC to DC converters. The purpose of a DC to DC converter is to take something like the 12 volts from your car battery and convert it down to 5 volts, say what you need to drive your iPad. Uh, or you can also go the other way around, convert 5 volts up to 12 volts. The serial port on a PC, for example, needs plus minus 12 volts. We're going to look at four different circuits. A simple voltage divider with a buffer, a more efficient design called a buck converter, a way to raise voltage called a boost converter, and also a charge pump. Now let's look at the simplest case. Suppose I had 12 volts from your car battery, and I want to convert it down to 5 volts. The easy way to do that is just use a voltage divider. If I use 12 kilo ohms in a circuit, I'll have 1 milliamp going through those two resistors, 12 volts over 12K. 1 milliamp across 5K gives you 5 volts. So the output right here should be 5 volts. That assumes no loading, however. If I connect a load to this, say to drive your iPad, and there's 100 ohms, I just change the circuit, it's no longer 5 volts. To buffer it, to keep that from happening, throw in a buffer, op amp and voltage follower mode. What that does, the input impedance for an op amp is large, approximately 10 to the 12 ohms, large enough you don't have to worry about it. The output impedance should be small so the op amp can drive your load without changing the voltage on the voltage divider. That works if I know what the input voltage is. If I'm not sure what the input voltage is, I could use a zener diode. Stick a 5 volt zener diode on this side. The voltage across the zener diode is fixed, regardless of what this voltage is. And likewise, the buffer will hold the output at 5 volts fixed. That's essentially what a 7805 voltage regulator does. It converts your voltage anywhere between 6 and 40 volts down to a 5 volt reference, in this case actually 5.7 volts. I can then use a transistor as a current amplifier. If I keep the base voltage at 5.7 volts, the voltage drop across the diode is 0.7, holding the output at 5 volts. The transistor provides beta so that a small current through the base gets amplified Thus, your power supply is driving the load. The disadvantage of this type of regulator is it's fairly inefficient. Suppose, for example, my load is drawing one amp. In that case, I'll have essentially one amp flowing all the way through that circuit. If the load is 5 volts, the remaining voltage, say one amp of 40 volt source, goes across the transistor. The transistor is dumping the excess voltage. The transistor is essentially dumping the excess power. It gives the advantages and disadvantages of a 7805 regulator. Advantages is very low cost, very simple design, easy to get to work. Works for a very wide range of voltages, anywhere between 6 and 40 volts. Disadvantage is the efficiency. If I keep my power supply down around 6 volts, they're about 83% efficient. Essentially, 5 out of 6 volts goes to the load. If I have a 40 volt power supply, only 5 out of 40 volts goes to the load. The rest is being dumped by the transistor. Suppose instead I want to come up with a more efficient design. But I have a battery operated device, 12% efficiency isn't that good. How do I convert 12 volts down to 5 volts at higher efficiencies? That's a buck converter. Essentially, what a buck converter does, it has an inductor. What the inductor does is it stores energy in the magnetic field where the energy is one-half Li squared. When the switch opens up, the field collapses and the inductor supplies power to the load. I've got a switch then. What the switch does is when the switch is closed, I've got a 12-volt source powering the device. That raises the output up to 12 volts. As I open the switch, the load drops down to zero volts. For a brief time, the inductor supplies the power but it will go down to zero if there's no, nothing powering the circuit. By chattering the switch on and off, I can essentially cause the output to ripple up and down, turning the switch on and off, holding the output at whatever I want, say 5 volts, anything between 0 and 12. To analyze a buck converter, 
I need to look at two cases, one where the switch is open, one where the switch is closed. The first look at the case where the switch is closed, I've got two nodes, I need to write two equations for two unknowns. First equation is easy, Vx equals 12 volts. Uh, second equation would be at uh, the right side, Vy. Send me the three currents to zero, the current to the left, Vy minus Vx over Ls, plus a current going through the capacitor, Vy over Cs, plus a current through the resistor, must add to zero. That's the differential equation that tells the output voltage when the switch is closed. What it's going to look like is something like this. I'm charging the output up to 12 volts. Next, look, let's look at what happens when the switch is open. When the switch is open, I no longer care about the power supply when the switch is open. Voltage drop across the diode is 0.7 volts. So Vx is minus 0.7. Vy is the same as before. What's happening in this case is I have some initial condition. And the output is discharging down, in theory, to minus 0.7 volts. Actually, the diode turns off when it gets to zero. The voltage doesn't actually go negative. Couple the two together, I can raise the output voltage by closing the switch, drop the output voltage by opening the switch, by chattering the switch on and off, I can hold the output at anything between 0 volts and 12 volts. To see how that works in simulation, let's build a splice model. This part of the circuit right here is your buck converter. I need a switch. To build a switch, got our old friend, the transistor, operating as a switch. When there is current flow, collector to emitter for a PNP transistor, the switch is on, and they get beta times as much current flowing collector to emitter, the switch is closed. When I turn off the base current, the collector current is beta times zero, the switch turns off. By chattering that switch on and off, I can open and close that switch. To control the voltage, I have a comparator. That checks to see is the output voltage greater than 5 volts. If it is, it closes the switch or opens the switch. If it's less than 5 volts, it closes the switch. The result looks like as so. When the output gets to 5 volts, I'm chattering the switch. When the output goes above 5 volts, I open the switch. When it goes below 5 volts, I close the switch. And that result is the output stays in nice regulated 5 volts. That's an example of a buck converter. A commercial one would be an LM2675 as an example. It allows you to convert anything between 6.5 and 40 volts down to 5 volts at up to 1 amp. It's up to 96% efficient, which is much better than, say, a voltage divider and a buffer. Disadvantage is it's $3 versus 39 cents. A buck converter lets you drop a voltage. Suppose I want to increase a voltage. The idea behind a boost converter is to use an inductor. The voltage across an inductor is LDIDT. If I suddenly turn off the current, I can get a very large voltage. I'll take those current spikes, or actually, I'll take those voltage spikes and capture them with a diode. That takes the large voltages. Diode turns on when I get a big, big voltage spike, turns up the capacitor. That lets me save the voltage and drive my load. By changing how often I open and close that switch, I can change how often I pump current into that capacitor, allowing me to adjust the voltage at the load. To analyze a disk converter, well, first let's build a circuit to illustrate that. Here, I've got my boost converter driving a 10 kilo ohm load. To get the boost converter to work, I need a transistor. I need a switch. Here again, I'm using our old favorite, the 
NPN transistor as a switch. When there is base current, the transistor turns on. When I turn off the base current, set the base voltage to zero. There's no current flow through the diode base to emitter, which turns off the collector to emitter current, and the switch turns off. Over on the right, I can see what happens as I turn that transistor on and off. When I turn the transistor off, I get LDIDT, a large spike in current through the inductor. That causes a spike in the output voltage. Diode D1 turns on, and I raise the voltage on the, the output, on the capacitor. When D1 turns off, C1 discharges through the 10K resistor. Next time I turn on the switch and turn it off again, I get another spike, increasing current flow. Diode 1 turns off, and C1 discharges through the load. I then get another spike through the diode, and so on and so on. The net result, it is it's 5 volts per division. I'm getting 17 volts out from a 5 volt power supply. To analyze a boost converter, I need to look at two cases, one where the switch is open, one where the switch is closed, and when the diode is on and off. When the diode is on, what's happened is I just opened up the switch. That creates a very large current, or voltage. That voltage is enough to turn on the diode, and I get current flow. In this case, I've got two nodes. So I need two equations for two, two unknowns. The first equation is I know V1 and V2 are related. V1 is equal to V2 plus 0.7. That's my diode. I know for, for an inductor, V sub 1 is LDIDT. And I also know at, at node V2, V2, well, the current through the capacitor, the current through the resistor, has to equal the current from the inductor. V2 over 1 over Cs, that's the current through the capacitor, plus V2 over R, must be the current through the inductor. These give you three equations for three unknowns. I've got two nodes, but I've added a third variable, I sub L. So my third variable requiring three equations. So that allows you to solve for the voltage and current when the diode turns on. When the diode turns off, it's actually much simpler. If the diode turns off, I simply have V2 disconnected from everyone else, in which case what I get V sub 2 over 1 over Cs. That's the current through the capacitor, plus the current through the resistor, V sub 2 over R equals 0. Couple those two together, and what I get is a charge, discharge, charge, discharge, as this, the diode turns on and the diode turns off. An example of a commercial boost converter would be an LT1316 that allows you to convert anything between 1.5 to 12 volts input into 1.23 to 30 volts out. Subject to the limitation, it can only drive 500 milliamps. The efficiencies, 80% or more. These are oftentimes used when I have a battery operated device. If I want to take a single AA battery at 1.5 volts, and drive a 5 volt load, say your microprocessor, this chip will do it. In addition, as your battery discharges, it'll hold the output at 5 volts. Advantage of a boost converter is it regulates the output voltage even when your input's less than 5 volts. Disadvantage is it costs $2 and needs a few external components. Fourth example I'd like to look at is a charge pump. A charge pump can convert 5 volts DC into 10 volts DC, or even more. The 
disadvantage, it has low current capability. However, it is able to bump up voltages on your circuit. The way it works is I take a 5 volt source with a diode D1 to a capacitor. Suppose I take this point and ground it. In that case, diode 1 turns on, charging up V1 to 4.3 volts. The 5 volt source minus 0.7 volts across D1. Next, suppose I take VA and bump it up to 5 volts. So I've got a microprocessor right here. That's the output of the microprocessor. I can vary the output voltage to 0 to 5. Now we bump it up to 5. There's energy in the capacitor. The energy is 1 half CV squared. The energy remains there. So the voltage across the capacitor remains 4.3 volts. Since the one place now at 5 volts, the output jumps to 9.3 volts. When it jumps up to 9.3 volts, diode 2 turns on, and I charge up the output to 9.3 volts minus 0.7 volts across the diode, 8.6 volts. I then take my input VA, bring it back down to 0 volts, diode, one, diode 2 turns off, diode 1 turns on, and I put more charge back on the plates. Likewise, by pulsing VA low and high, 0 volts, 5 volts, I turn on D1 to charge up the capacitor. When I pulse VA high, diode 2 turns on, and I pump charge with the load. That's the name charge pump. A single charge pump with a single input can take your 5-volt source and bump it up to 8.6 volts. If you simulate that circuit, you can kind of see every time I send a square wave to VA, the output voltage increases. What works for one stage works for multiple stages. The trick for multiple stages is I need to go even odd. I want at one point diode 1 to turn on. At that same time, diode 2 is turned off. So I've got charge coming in from the source. With diode 2 turned off, I could actually have a second stage. I could have diode 3 turning on, diode 4 turning off, flipping charge this way. Likewise, I can get by with just uh, two channels. But when diode 1 is turned on, diode 2 is turned off. That's controlled by VA. Similarly, when I want diode 2 turned on, pump charge in the next stage, I want one turned off and three turned off. Likewise, I'm alternating. Every other stage goes to VA. Every even stage goes to VB. Pulse those two out of sync. And what I wind up with is a charge pump that can raise the voltage beyond 8.3 volts. Essentially, I'm getting 4.3 volts per stage. And you can see that in the simulation. Here I'm taking a 5 volt input and raising the output to 5, 10, about 12 volts using four stages. At 21.5 volts using four stages. You can also buy a charge pump on a chip. For example, a Max 662A takes anything between 4.5 and 5.5 volts in and outputs a nice constant 12 volts, 30 milliamps out. This is useful when I need to come up with a 12 volt power supply. For example, flash memory oftentimes needs 12 volts to operate. I don't need a separate power supply for a 12 volt supply. I can just use, use the same 5 volt supply that goes to my processor. And with this chip, with a charge pump, deliver 12 volts to your flash memory. Disadvantage of a charge pump is you need four external components, the capacitors for your charge pump, and the cost. They're 267 each. So with that, we have several different ways to convert voltage from one level to another. I can drop the voltage with a voltage divider and a buffer. I can do it more efficiently with a buck converter. I can raise the voltage with a boost converter. I can also raise the voltage with a charge pump.